before we start the tour, we first look into the background history of the place. And as the tour... I can hear you. You can hear me? You can hear me. Before we... Can you hear me now? Now that's better. Okay. Before we start the tour, we first look into the background history of the place. And as the tour progresses, if there's any question, please don't hesitate to ask. The Portuguese first came here in 1471. They came along with European goods like guns, gunpowder, scratchers, liquor, mirror, in exchange for our gold, ivory, later spices. Their system of trade at that particular time was the butter system, exchanging goods for goods. And the major commodity that the Portuguese were much interested in was the gold. And they could say the rate at which our people here were giving out their gold gave them the impression that the land here could be in abundance of it. So they named this place Al Mina. In the Portuguese language, it means the mine. Our people at that time couldn't pronounce it properly, and it was corrupted in the today's word El Mina. And that invariably became the name of the town. Edina is also a Portuguese word. Our dear, in the Portuguese language, it means the village. So our people couldn't pronounce it, and it became Edina. So Edina and Elmina are wrongly pronounced Portuguese words. But we had a name before they came. This place was called Anu Mansan. And Anu Mansan simply means inexhaustible water. 1482, that is uh, 11 years later after they had arrived, more zeal for gold motivated one of the Portuguese captains called Don Diego de Assembly. He came along with 600 soldiers made up of carpenters, masons and artisans who came here to see then chief of Elimina called Nana Kwaminansa negotiated with him and he gave the Portuguese this portion of the land. And it is important to note that that was the first time a title to a land was transferred from an African chief to an European. And before, this place was full of rocks. So the Portuguese had to carry, get the level ground before putting up this boat. And the rocks that the builder is standing on it today is sedimentary rocks and it's said to be a hundred meters beneath the air. And upon completion they named it after one of the saints patron in Portugal called Saint George. So this is a Saint George's Castle or Elimina Castle. And to the Portuguese they had two reasons of building the castle. One, they wanted us to believe that uh, this was only built to protect their trade and their traders, to, to have rooms for their missionaries who were coming to spread Christianity. And before the early 16th centuries, all the rooms on the ground floor in the castle were being used as warehouses or storerooms. However, when the slave trade started, these same warehouses were converted into dungeons where the Africans were kept. And in total, the castle is talking of a minimum of 1,000 Africans at the time, 400 women, 600 men. And I believe we should also understand the fact that the Portuguese here in Elmina did not get up one day said to themselves that they want to go into slavery. At least something brought about it or something might have happened somewhere. 1441 was the first time ever the Portuguese started taking Africans to Portugal and the one who did the capturing was called Antem Gonclaves but in some books it's called Antonio Gonzalez. And he was one of the explorers of Prince Henry of Portugal. And he came to the place in Senegambia called Real de Oro, which means River of God. When he was going back to Portugal, he captured 10 Africans 
had this to say in full. When they got to Portugal, the prince saw them and he was very, very happy for two reasons. One, he wanted the most intelligent ones among them to be trained to become missionaries to hasten the spread of Christianity. So some to serve as interpreters when they come back to Africa. But however sad, when these people got settled over there, they never came back as intended or planned. They ended up in the palaces and plantations as left. And since then, no European explorer came to Africa when he was going back to an African captive. That is why others are of the view that uh, possibly the Portuguese had that in mind before building this castle. Simply because they started taking Africans in 1441. 30 years later, they got to Elimina in 1471. 41 years later, that is in 1482, the situation changed when the Spaniards got to America and the West Indies. They used the Native Americans called the Ameridians or Red Indians to work on sugar, tobacco, cotton plantations. The story says Spanish brutalities overwork and the effect of European diseases decimated the indigenous population. So it had to stop. And there was this Catholic priest whose name is always mentioned by Bartholomew de las Casas. He suggested to the Spanish crown to arrange for Africans, which to him are much stronger, and were doing the same work under similar climatic conditions. So in 1512, 1515, 50 Africans were taken from Spain to Hispaloni, Santo Domingo, now Haiti. And when they were tried, they proved physically strong. The demand for our ancestors started coming in. And that marked the beginning of what is then the unfortunate transatlantic slave trade. The transatlantic slave trade is also known as the triangular slave trade, simply because the network involves Africa <coughs> on the eastern side, the New World on the western side, and Europe to the north. And every effort into the study of slave trade especially what became known as a transatlantic slave trade should carry with it all things that would be there at one time and it's contamination with no uncertain things to be understood. Truly it is the most heinous crime committed against one race and continent to the benefit of other races and other continents. And its effect is being fought today after over 200 years of its abolition. And slavery itself can be defined as a process whereby a person becomes a slave. A slave being a person who is legally owned by someone else and who works as a servant for that person and has little or no personal freedom. Putting this into perspective, one could then say that Slavery in one form or the other has been with man from time immemorial. Not in Africa had it been the case, but among the Jewish, the Greek, and every Asian society on the surface of the earth. However, it is clear that from Africa and Africa alone, that uh, millions upon millions of our people were first forced across the Siren Desert and the Atlantic Ocean is scattered all over the world and it's indeed from Africa and London for the past 400 years our people were subjected to the worst human atrocities ever to happen on the earth. The continent and Africans all over the world today are not fully recorded from what happened in the past. Long before the coming of the Europeans into Guinea coast of Africa. Our local people here themselves had slavery already in existence. But uh, who a slave was and how a slave was treated could not be compared 
to what happened in the time terms. To many, the right way to describe those under the system was the indentured set. In that, that person to large extent had right. He could marry, raise free kids, acquire property, pay the price on his head, and he could automatically free. He or she would not be killed without any justifiable reasons. He was clothed, sheltered, fed, and protected. And it was very, very difficult to identify a slave or a free man. And one thing unique that happened in the system was that a slave could shift from being a slave to a royal. And how could that happen? If the man took to have the military or managerial abilities, he becomes the caretaker of the master's house. And the descendants of such became royals. Female slaves could become white to royal. The system slept and the descendants like it also became royal. Today in Ghana, many are the chiefs of the various communities, villages and towns whose ancestors were now royals before by the sea slaves. This was in the system before they came. To them it's still always be a slave and a slave is the absolute property of the master. He has no protection against the wickedness of the master and he is a tool to be used and discarded when a One thing to me that in the way background history into the past. And the whole tour of the castle has been put on a DVD, a CD. It talks about where they had the last part at St. Manson, Elimina Township and the historical village in Elimina. The tour that I'm doing with you now and the tour of the Hebrews Castle. There are some books I will help you get a copy. When you get back home, we'll share it. It's a very detailed education material. Then the tour at the full mill section. Feel free to ask questions. Yes. Yes. And also, there were no means of our convenience in here. So, empty containers were being placed at the various corners for them to ease themselves. But they were not coming from Ghana alone. So, they said Burkina Faso, Togo, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Cameroon, and the rest. They were all brought in here. And it took them one to two months before they arrived. 
Because in the olden days, there were no cars, so they had to walk barefooted from the various countries to this place. Some were even left at the expense of wild animals in the forest. When they got here, they were very, very weak. And as women do have their menstruation, practically they did everything on the floor. That is why you cannot underestimate the stench and the heat over here. And as a result, most of them died. When they died, they were not buried. They were removed and thrown into the ocean for the fish to feed. They were then given something small to eat there to keep them alive. Some ate. Some refused to eat. They preferred to die. And they never had a chance of cleaning their teeth in one bathroom. And all these openings you see today before had doors on them. So the only source of uh, ventilation came from that hole. And this same uh, hole is connected to another room called the magazine, where they kept their ammunition. So when there's a leakage, the chemicals came straight to this room and were in a very bad situation. If they were actually in for profit, why they would that to me doesn't make sense. And they will give you two answers. They said, one, Africans were very strong people, giving them the normal conditions here, who made them fight back. And those who could survive through these uh, brutalities were the strong Africans who work when they get to the new one. So in a way, they were trying to eliminate the weaker ones from the stronger ones. But if we all could be sincere for an answer, in the golden days, it was very cheap to come by them. It was very, very expensive to get one person into the dungeon. Then they will make sure that the fellow lives under the normal condition. Okay, they the profit, the actual investment, but they never cared. That is why, to me, the intention of the economy wasn't to trade, but to loot or steal, not peace, but war, not partnership, but it's I will give you one, two minutes. Take pictures of this very section. Very careful. What happened here? I was made. Oh. Uh, beneath the courtyard is a reservoir. A reservoir built by the Portuguese. They had a pile connected to the roof. So the piles over there are not the original. So when it rains, it gets in there. And when it is full, it contains um, 20,000 gallons of water. But in 1637, when the Dutch captured the castle from them, the Dutch were not interested in using that. So they went to the mill slave yard and built their reservoir over there, thinking the Portuguese could poison that. But it's been proven that water in there was never, ever poisoned. When they came here initially to try, they never brought the women. Why? Because the rate at which they were dying of uh, malaria and yellow fever, the coastal line was even turned as the white one's way. And as they stayed longer, they couldn't stay without them. So they were sexually abusing the women here. But the government, because of its position, any time he wanted to satisfy his sexual curiosity act on the balcony he stood out there and the doors were open for the foreign government or something. A lot of probes and they discharged. The chosen one might have been the that came from one to two months without any head teeth nor bar. Without being menstruated, yet the governor had paid. So it became the responsibilities of the soldiers to fetch water for her to bath. And after the bathing, she was given something small to eat, and she was dressed and sent to the governor's quarters through the private access door. Let's have a This happens to be the private access door to 
the governor's quarters. And which I see the governor's quarters when we get to the field. After the humiliation, the woman was not made to stay there. Sorry, because that wasn't a permanent plan. She was then sent back to the dungeons and instances. Some became mistresses and stayed longer up there. When the ships came, those found pregnant were subsequently freed or liberated. But due to the long of from the hinterland, some really drained their way back. And this partly explained why along the coast we have the mulattoes, the light color skin. And also, the Europeans did not want their children to go wayward or astray, so they built houses in town, kept those pregnant women over there. Four or five years later, they went for their children, brought them back here, and gave them formal education. So, formal education started from this very castle, and those children of the Europeans became the first elect in the society and they felt superior over the indigenous people. When we were being given before this club, that was when the divide, conquer, and rule started coming in. Some went to the village, got married to the local women over there, built individual houses, known as stone houses, stayed with them, had children, and gave their names to their children. And before, and today in Ghana, we have people bearing European names. The here, the Souza, Viala, Vroom, Van Dyke, Van der Poy, Smith, Ferguson, Jackson, Janssen, Langson, and all the sisters and sisters and of such were here. They used to punish the women who refused or resisted rape. They were brought from the dungeons, chained to the ankle, or made to stand, beat rain or shine from morning to evening. No food, no water. They did that to break the spirit, or to serve as a deterrent to others in the dungeons, so that any time the children get in there, they could easily get thrown to rape, so it was meant for punishment. On the 3rd of July, 2015, we had a program here, the return of the captives. So people from different countries came and voluntarily slept in the dungeon from 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. the following day. So this were the materials that they used during the event. I'll give you a few minutes for you to have a look at that. Let's come with you. 
when the ships came, the women who had survived through these uh, conditions were then put back in chains. They were brought from the dungeons through this very point to the door of no return. Before they had stairs that they descended. I say the stairs are no more because we stopped using the reservoir and also constructed a drainage system here so that when it rains, water could easily get out of the castle. These were put there just to prevent accident. Today I am here, you are assured of returning. So please don't be afraid. <laughs> Faster, faster, and the chain will let you go. When the retraining goes, the door from this very point to the other. But when they start the slave trade, they narrowed it so they contain one person at a time. In the olden days, the sea was touching the castle, but it has receded. So when the ships came, a smaller boat was brought here to convey them to the big ships before they were taken away. Taken to Haiti, Guyana, Suriname, Liverpool, the Caribbean, and America. Behind you are rates. These rates were brought here to pay tribute to those who died. And please see the nature of the door. Shouldn't let you think that um, tall and fat Africans were not brought here. They were. But due to the treatment that they were subjected to in the dungeons, one could be lame or slim. So he or she would That fall. time there was a ceremony held here in Ghana called the Yantra, which simply means that when they were going, they never had a chance of saying goodbye. And after that ceremony, led by the president of the National House of Chiefs, the late Nana Udro and Nima Paul II, went to some chiefs of Africa, the United States of America, precisely New York, had discussions with Africans over there. And when they came back, this black here came up. And it's only certain as a mission statement the tour of the castle. And as we walk through the dungeons today as an African, it has to be in the everlasting memory of the suffering of our ancestors. And this should compel all of us to pray for all those who died to rest in perfect peace. May those who love to return find their root. May man never be given the time to commit such crime against man. Every one of us needs to uphold. So as we go out of the castle, we carry the responsibilities that wherever we find ourselves, we try to fight against injustice so that evils of such nature never again be repeated. Each and every one of us has a role to play. So please play your role very, very well 
And I believe when we do that, we give a meaning to the truth. Dr. Martin Luther King once said that um, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. From here, you walk straight to this very first, sir. But don't forget, I will lock you up. <laughs> That was the condensed salt. The condensed salt. Salt for the Africans who were fighting with the Europeans for them to relate. And today we may call them the freedom fighters. We were sent in there and we made the start to death, no food, no water. These are buttresses just to support the walls of the castle. The metals. The police were climbing it up and down for exercise. At the center is the Portuguese church. Portuguese, they were Catholics. The church were not Catholics. The church were Protestants. So they divided the church into two. The Union of Law and the Junior Soldiers met, where the Junior Soldiers were eating and drinking. Down fortune as all of the fact, where they were buying and selling stuff. When they were drinking, they were clapping.
see if it changed, we wouldn't have a problem with that. <laughs>
on est dessus.
come down left. Right and you come down left.